Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is a beautiful day out today. 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It feels like summer. I am slowly moving more trees into the greenhouse. Let's go inside and have a look. On my left hand bench here, I have my Sarissa, the ficus for auction, my ficus fancy, ficus microcarpa, and my ficus microcarpa that I grew from a seed. On the right hand side, I've got my ficus religiosa, my Schefflera clump style, my ficus benjamina that I repotted this year, and my cityscape penging. The automatic vents are doing a fantastic job. It never gets too hot in here. It's always really pleasant. The aerial roots are continuing to grow on this tiger bark ficus. You can see them on the surface of the soil here. All over here. Really cool. I'm also getting some aerial roots developing off the branches. There's one here. And there's a few bumps. There's one here. So yeah, it's nice and humid in this greenhouse. The ficus really love it. On my ficus fancy here, I'm also getting new aerial roots or roots coming out. You can see them down here, all the white roots, hugging the existing roots. And all over here too, they're coming down off the trunk. So that's good to see. On my Schefflera, I'm also getting all kinds of aerial roots across the surface of the soil. Growing down over the pot. <laughs> yeah, and all kinds up in the canopy there. Pretty cool to see. I was talking to the manufacturer of these greenhouses and they do make a bench that goes across the end here. So I'm going to order that. So it'll be just like the existing benches here. It'll just fill in this spot across the back. So that'll be really nice. It'll make a little more room in the greenhouse for growing bonsai. They also sell shelf brackets. So the brackets fit into these channels on the upright beams here. So you can either run a small shelf across the top of your bench here. You can put one across the back wall anywhere. You can raise it up and down. So I think I'll buy some of those shelf brackets. Um, on this wall, you can see, you know, I don't have height for a shelf above these trees. They're fairly tall. But maybe on this side, the shorter trees, I could have a shelf up a little higher, grow some small bonsai up there. And definitely across the back wall, I could put a shelf all the way across because of all the height of the peak there. So that'll be really nice to get those. So I'll put my order in for those and uh, pick them up. We've had really nice warm weather the last couple of weeks, but there is a trend. It's slowly cooling down in the upcoming weeks. So I will need to add a heater into the greenhouse here. I'll use one of those uh, radiator style heaters and have a fan to circulate the air but I need to get the electrical cord in here. So down here at the base of the greenhouse, I'll have to drill a hole through the wall, run an electrical cord in here, and then I can power the heater and the fan and any lights that I need. So that'll be kind of nice. I'll have to uh, try and get that set up for tomorrow, I think. Rogers greenhouses also sell clips for a, uh, a sprinkler or a misting system for your greenhouse. So I'm going to have a look at those when I go down to pick up the new bench. I'm back outside and what a difference. Inside the greenhouse it's warm and humid and out here it's kind of cool and there's a bit of a breeze. Let's look at some other projects on the go here on the bonsai zone. Before the nights start getting cool, I'm going to have to fix this greenhouse up. You can see the plastic on the roof is kind of ripped. Um, and I'm thinking of redoing the roof. If I come inside here, I've had these plastic hoops up here 
And I used to have two beams across here and the one broke one winter under the weight of the snow. These were just like recycled fence boards. So I'm thinking of maybe putting a slope roof on it. So high at the back here, sloping down so it gets the nice sunshine coming in and it'd be a lot stronger building kind of a yeah made out of wood or something instead of these plastic hoops which always bend under the weight of the snow so i'm going to do that i'll have to fix my plastic up here uh, figure out something some way of attaching it firmly but other than that the greenhouse has stood up really really well um, this is its i guess eighth year so it's done really well it's kept my plants warm i throw that insulated tarp on the roof when it starts getting cool out put the heater on and yeah i think we went down to minus six degrees or may, maybe even minus seven degrees celsius outside and i kept the plants inside the greenhouse above freezing and healthy so yeah it's been really good this greenhouse and i'll i'll keep using it my plan for both greenhouses is to keep the tropicals in the greenhouses as long as possible until it gets down to the point where I can't keep them warm at night. Then they'll have to come into the plant room. So when that happens, when the trees go into the plant room permanently, then I can put all my hardy trees into the greenhouses and they'll act as a cold frame in the winter. Now I will have to put a tarp on the roof of here to keep the sun off it otherwise it'd get too hot inside to keep the trees dormant in the winter time so yeah so that's how I'm going to overwinter my trees so I won't be bringing them into the basement they'll stay in the greenhouses for the whole winter and if it gets really cold like down to below minus 18 celsius in the winter time I'll have heaters inside these greenhouses to keep the temperature kind of more towards the freezing point. I don't want them getting too cold in these greenhouses over the winter. I call that rooster David Bowie. He's kind of got that blonde hair. Hello, hello. Hello, fluff balls. A lot of people have been asking me about the giant greenhouse we took down. And we still have it. It's all in parts right here. I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with that eventually. Over here in the bonsai area, I started the wall for the greenhouse. You can see it going along here. Right there. So I'm going to put up a section of the greenhouse so it'll, this will be a solid straight wall. And then the arches will come from the top of the wall all the way down to the ground there. And that'll be my greenhouse so it'll cover this entire bonsai area here but it won't be that giant one that we took down so that's the plan for the big greenhouse is just use a small portion of it i may even turn that big section of the greenhouse into a screen house that way in the summer it gets rain on it lots of air circulation and then when the weather starts getting cold i can roll down the plastic and turn it more into a mini greenhouse for the winter Let's go into this greenhouse now and we'll check out the figs that have been growing. So in here, wow, it's warm in here. In here we have my wife's fig tree that's planted in the ground down here. And you can see it's just covered in figs everywhere, all along it. So we've gotten quite a few off, these, off this uh, tree this year already and they were really really good over here is the fig tree that i bought at the kw bonsai society's nursery crawl and you can see the figs on it are ripening up really really well i've had one off of here and they're really good too so the plan is to eventually turn this into a bonsai it had that nice kind of twisty trunk on it so i'll chop it off somewhere down here and grow it as a bonsai and then i'll try and root the top as a cutting and that'll be, you know, planted in the greenhouse here to grow figs. My wife built this structure out of old skids. There's a big skid vertical here, one over here vertical, and then a skid on the roof. And it was put up for grapevines, which she's got some nice grapevines growing here. You can see it here. Good looking grapevine. There's uh, 
hardy kiwis growing up this wall. However, the squash decided that it's a good place to climb up. So you can see the squash plants, they climb up and you can see instead of grapes hanging down, we've got these giant squash. There's another one here. So you gotta be careful when you walk under here, you might get a squash fall on your head. In the garden here, this is the pepper area and there's some really, really good peppers. You can see the red peppers down there. I hope you can see them. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of nice peppers off this area. There's a, over here, there's a mulberry tree that my wife has planted and it's just covered in mulberries, or it was. Hmm. Maybe they've been picked or the birds got them, but it's growing really well. So the plan is to prune this, keep it a small tree, sort of like a bonsai tree, so it doesn't get too big in the garden area here. This greenhouse is pretty well done for the year. It had tomatoes in it, and they've all been picked. There's uh, strawberries in there. I don't know, that looks like... Uh, what is that? <laughs> uh, Swiss, Swiss chard, I'm guessing? I'm not sure. In my wife's big greenhouse here, let's go check that out. She's got a plastic sheet to kind of keep the heat and moisture in. So the peach tree is doing really well at the back here. It's planted in the ground. It's, uh, it doesn't do well in the summer up at the top. It's a little tall, so it, we're gonna try and prune it back so it's not right up at the top of the roof where it's really hot. And this time of year, it's doing fantastic up there, but in midsummer, it gets a little too hot. She got a gift from one of her customers on her paper route, ground up fall leaves. Check that out. And I can see she's already used it underneath the peach tree here, mulching around it. So that looks really good. Yeah, that's a good gift. If you want to get a gift for my wife, get her something practical like leaves. <laughs> There's the birdhouse from Stefan there. Another one that we're going to put up Really cool. There's another one on the ground down there. So yeah, everything's still doing well in here. I think, I think that's Swiss chard. I don't think they're beets, but I could be wrong. There's more of it here. Uh, there's mint, there's squash, there's tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, strawberries. Uh, I think there's kale in here somewhere. Oh yeah, there's some tomatoes that are getting ripe. Yeah, so it's done really well. Uh, there's raspberries, blackberries in here, strawberries still flowering. Yeah, so it's fantastic having this greenhouse. It keeps all the pests out and keeps the heat and humidity in and everything seems to do really well in here. I got a new greenhouse for my bonsai and my wife thought, well, the chickens, they need a gift too. So she's building them a sunroom for the winter time so they can come out and sun themselves. So this entire room is made of recycled materials. So my wife, she goes out and she finds these skids and uh, takes them all apart. The windows were a gift though. They were left at the end of a driveway. Yeah, the windows are a gift. They were at the end of a driveway, free to take. So everything in here is recycled except for the metal brackets that hold it all together. So it's kind of an extension off of the existing mini barn here. And she's put down patio stones. And then she'll put uh, wood chips on top of here so then she can clean it out. Yeah, so it's going to have windows, skylights. There'll be a door going out to the outside pen for the winter. Yeah, and a door at the front here. So it's really, really cool. The chickens are just going to love that in, you know, midwinter on a sunny day. They'll just love it out there. Once I get those two greenhouses all fixed up, up and running, I'll be back to work on the plant room, trying to finish off the exterior and maybe a lot of work on the interior too, if I get time. It all depends on the weather. So it's not a real high priority because this worked for me quite well last year. So if I don't get to the plant room this year, I'll have to wait until next year. What are you doing? Hey, 
How are you? She wanted water. You wanted some water to clean yourself, didn't you? I've got the two triangle shaped windows from the plant room here and someday I'm hoping to build a little greenhouse. I'll use those as the end walls, have a sloped surface on the top, sort of like a cold frame or something, maybe to grow plants in the ground or something. I'll finish off today's video with some updates to some of the trees. Let's head into the greenhouse and we'll look at the Portulacaria aphras that I got recently. So here is the tiny leaved one and it, it looks pretty good. It looks promising. It's kind of doing quite well. The lavender from Zin is doing really, really well. It's actually growing. The variegated Portulacaria aphras are looking quite good too. No problems with those yet. The light green ones here are also doing well so far. The Portulacaria cuttings are doing well. The ones with the pink stems aren't doing so well. Let's come over here. And you can see those, they're starting to dry up. They've lost their pink color. So I don't know, it's not looking promising. I'm misting them, I'm keeping the soil on the dry side, but they're just not responding to anything. They didn't look good when I got them in the, in the mail, so. I don't know. Back here, my little fig tree. It has a fig growing on the top of it. You can see that there. So I'm hoping that ripens up and I can eat that. That'll be kind of, kind of nice. The lemon cypress cuttings from Bonsai J are here. This one looks really good. The smaller ones look okay. There's one back here that doesn't look good and the main tree it's got one little green shoot on it, and I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. These are little uh, jades. I don't know what kind of jade they are, but uh, that was from Bonsai J too. And they're looking really good. They, they weren't cuttings, they were already rooted. So they look really cool. The uh, Ficus religiosa, the little tiny one, is under the leaves here. It is doing really well. It's uh, amazing when you consider how much of the roots I cut off. Over here, the jade that flowered last year has flowers on it once again this year. So that's exciting. So I think the secret to getting a jade to flower is having a natural light cycle. So it's out in the greenhouse here. It doesn't get any artificial light. So it just goes through the natural light cycle. And at a certain point in time, it stimulates it to flower. It might have something to do with the temperatures too. It's quite cool at night in this greenhouse. So yeah, so yeah, leave your jades out. Don't let them get frost, but uh, keep them cool in natural light and I think they'll flower because mine has, this is the second year in a row. The other succulents that I think are campfire jades, but I could be wrong, are also flowering. You can see on the tips, there's flowers. Um, I'm not sure what kind of plant it is exactly, but it looks like some kind of jade. The jade that Scott Winnard from the YouTube channel Let's Do Bonsai sent to me in the mail is doing fantastic. You can see all the leaves coming out. So I got that in the mail and I gave it a rather severe pruning. I potted it up and it's just been doing fantastic. The tall trees here, these are from Todd's Tropicals a YouTube channel. He sent uh, Bonsai J a whole bunch of seeds in the mail and Bonsai J gave me a whole bunch of seeds from that package. And I'm not sure what kind this is. Uh, if anyone knows, they could <laughs> write it in the comments because yeah, I I'm just not sure what it is, but it's uh, doing really well. It's starting to get quite a thick trunk on it. This is all from one tree, they are branches. And it's getting a nice trunk on it. Uh, I'll have to prune it down again. But yeah, doing really well, but I don't know what it is. The almond tree over here, the wild almond, is growing nice and tall. You can see the tip of it here. 
yeah, doing really well. All the climbing aloe cuttings that I stuck in here are doing really well. They rooted really easily. I've been giving those away all summer. I'm hoping when Jay from Blue Jay Bonsai comes over, I can give him some of those too. The ficus religiosa cutting, that big cutting I took, is starting to sprout. It's got shoots coming out on it. So that's really exciting. It was quite a large cutting and I planted it fairly deep in the pot here. So I think that's going to be a really cool bonsai in the future. The Jerusalem thorns haven't grown a whole lot lately. I think they don't like the uh, colder temperatures, but they're still looking healthy. The uh, hibiscus from Hawaii, that's my largest one, I think, in the seed tray here. It's growing quite large. So that's starting to get woody down on the trunk, so that'll have to get pruned back soon. The succulents that Ashley sent me here are all doing really, really well. That's good to see. There's more over here. The Frank Yee cork bark jade cuttings are doing really well too. Here's a larger one of these ones that I think might be a campfire jade. You can see it's just covered in flowers all over the top of it. So yeah, that's what the trunk looks like, very smooth. It's, it sure looks like a jade, but I just don't know what variety it is. When Leszek was over last time, we uh, headed downtown to the Royal Oak Tree growing by the courthouse and it was full of acorns. There was tons on the ground and tons in the tree. So we collected up a whole bunch. So Leszek is taking some back to Alberta with them and I've got a whole bunch that I'm going to grow for next season. This locust tree that David gave me has got some spectacular fall colors on it. Just a bright yellow color. That is really cool. So I'm looking forward to developing that as a bonsai. So I get a nice canopy that's covered in yellow in fall. It'll be really cool to see. The bog forest is still looking quite nice in its fall colors. There's one larch on the end here that still hasn't gotten its fall colors yet, but the others are looking really cool. Just like walking through a forest. Yeah. I didn't show on video how I got these triangular panes in up here on the greenhouse. Uh, what I did is I loosened off all the bolts and then I lifted, I pushed up on the roof beam there as much as I could with my head on a ladder. And then I retightened everything in that lifted position. And that helped. That gave me just enough clearance to get this side in and this side. I didn't quite get enough clearance, but I got the glass in but it doesn't have the plastic strip, but, uh, but it, it's assembled anyway. So I, I've got lots, I've got lots more bonsai work coming up and cons <laughs> I've got lots more bonsai and construction work coming up this fall. So that's it for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the bonsai zone. <laughs>